Welcome to ClickFunnels Radio, the podcast that brings you the latest strategies, insights, and success stories from online marketers just like you who utilize funnels to grow their business. Our mission is simple, to help you unleash the true potential of your online business by harnessing the power of funnels. Join us every week as we bring you exclusive interviews and thought-provoking discussions that will revolutionize the way you approach online marketing. Here are your hosts, Laura Demetrius and Chris Cameron. Welcome back to another episode of ClickFunnels Radio. Joined with me, my, well, first off, my name is Chris Cameron. Joined with me as always is my co-host, Laura Demetrius, who unfortunately has been a little bit under the weather. What's up, Laura? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I've got this head cold and I feel like I don't usually sound this. I, I, I don't know if I sound worse in my own head or if it just sounds like I'm super stuffy to everybody else, but I'm going to try to limit myself a little bit more today. But I do have a lot of exciting you, you things sound that I want to ask. You sound amazing. Don't even, <laughs> don't even worry about it. You sound amazing. Well, I am super excited for our guest today, uh, Kevin Anson. He, Kevin is best known for helping businesses conceptualize and create winning video ad creatives. He's actually done this. He's produced thousands of videos and ads for some of the biggest names over the last 19 years. Years, including Russell Brunson, of course, Brett Bouchard, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, Mike Tyson, just to name a few. Kevin, Why what is a up, roster? Man? Like that is a, an insane roster of clients you've had. <laughs> yeah, well, I I give a, a lot of the thanks to Russell, to be honest. I mean, um, Russell's a big deal, and being able to work with him made it a lot easier to introduce myself to these various other people be it, you know, be backstage at at different events or, you know, over email or however we're able to get introduced, you know, Russell even introduced me to like Brendan Burchard and the guys at Kajabi. And so I give a lot of thanks to Russell for sure. But uh, yeah, it's been quite the journey over the last five years working with some really, really cool clients. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. I I love to like recall like a lot of these guests that I've met, you know, five years ago or more. And uh, Russell was doing a speaking gig down at what was it? Flip packing live in San Diego. Yep. And Kevin, that's where I first met you. That's when they first launched the one funnel away challenge. And, uh, we had the 30 days book and I remember watching you. I, this is how I know that Kevin Anson is not only obsessed with video, but he's obsessed with internet marketing. He grabbed, I remember you grabbed this book and by the time the event was over, you were like halfway through this book and you were like, this book is gold. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Yeah. And my son was there at the event too. And he was probably, you know, right. seven years old. And I was so excited to get a copy and give it to him. And then Russell, uh, I believe Russell signed it for him. And then they took a picture together. But oh, so cool. yeah, I, I remember that. That's probably, is that the last time we saw each other in person or was it? Well, I don't know. I think we ran into each other at Funnel Hacking Live a couple Funnel times. Funnel Hacking Live. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe TNC, actually. Oh, traffic conversion. Yeah, that's possible yeah, too. Yeah, probably yeah. 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 That's right. Well, I have to I have to also notice, you know, you were worried a little bit about this uh having a video aspect, and it probably won't for those who are listening, but we may use some video stuff. We may cut this up. And you were just saying that you were embarrassed because you usually don't have a bed in your office. What's going on with that? What kind of videos are you making over there? <laughs> yeah. So um I'm not making those types of videos, but uh, no, we had some <laughs> we had some family over recently, and we have four kids and four bedrooms. Well, in addition to the master bedroom, and the only other bedroom for the family to stay in was my office because I have a pretty big office. <laughs> so we had to put a bed in the office, and so now I have a bed in my background. For those of you who can't see right now. And so it's a little bit awkward when I get on Zoom calls. I'm like, listen, I don't usually have a bed in my uh, in my office, but it's temporary. <laughs> so we're making a joke out of it. I feel oh, like everybody hilarious. who works from home can relate to that at some point in their lives. At yeah. some point, you're going to have like a guest or a bed or something you don't want behind you. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, I know you're talking about it too, Laura. I've had plenty of kids toys in the background, probably a dirty diaper at some point. You know, it's... Oh, yeah. The list goes on for sure. Yes. Yeah. That's why I finally got this office. I had to get away from the constant distractions of baby (laughs) and toddler things behind me. So I can relate. Right. I actually want to talk about something. um, For those of you who don't already know, obviously, we had mentioned Kevin is going to be um, a 
featured speaker at Funnel Hacking Live. And he is going to be with a cluster of other folks talking about um, the attractive character. And if you don't already know, the attractive character is kind of a big part of what Russell has been teaching and what um, the theme of Funnel Hacking Live will be this year, which is the linchpin model. And I'm really excited to learn from you because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are like, I I think I'm the attractive character of my own business. If not, I should find one. Like, What does this mean for me? What does it mean for my brand? How do I promote that? Can you talk a little bit about what your talk will be like and how doing these video ads will be really helpful for somebody who is an attractive character of their business? Yeah, absolutely. So something that we found after doing thousands of ads over the last you know five years, I've been doing videos since 2004. So it's been a while. But um, only in the last five years or so, I got really heavily into video ads. And something that we've discovered after running so many ads and testing so much stuff is that when a person is on camera representing the product or service that they're trying to sell or trying to um, bring awareness to, that those ads typically do a lot better than something where it's just, you know, maybe it's a voiceover, maybe there's just music in there. And so when you have the opportunity or you have the skills or you have the desire to be on camera to represent your brand, it is like the best thing that you can do. And it doesn't mean that you have to hire a camera crew and hire an editing team and do all that crazy stuff. You really just have to put yourself out there, get on camera and frame your messaging in a certain way um, to get people to, you know, to click on your ad and to actually learn more about you. And so when you are the attractive character, you're putting yourself out there, you're energetic, um, you know, you're excited, you're passionate about what it is that you're trying to share with the world, then, you know, it resonates with people. And so they want to make that connection, that personal connection with another human being. It's kind of like getting on a Zoom call with somebody and you've ever done that where, you know, maybe you have your camera on, but the other person doesn't for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. And you just you don't make that connection with that person, mm-hmm. even though you still have a great call, but you would have preferred to see their face um, and go through that meeting. So that way you can kind of build I, that connection. You build rapport, right? I always assume somebody's doing something weird, right? Like you just woke up, your hair's not done or right. something, you know, or you got a bed in the background. I don't know what it is, but I always assume <laughs> right. something weird's going on. Like if they don't have it on. And, and when you talk about, I'm just joking, but when you when you talk about the attractive character, I know some people are the second that a camera turns on, Kevin, they freak out. They like freeze, mm-hmm. even if they're somewhat the attractive character, whether they have a book or anything. But when when the video element gets involved, sometimes people freeze. And I think a lot of times practice and just doing it over and over is a good answer. But what do you have to tell people who are like, I freeze on camera. I'm scared of camera. I just trip over yes. my words. What would you, you tell somebody like that? You stole my question, Chris. That oh, was my next question. we're same way. I love this though, because I do feel like it is something that people just get like stage fright or they're like a deer in headlights. And even people who have authority feel that way. So I would love to know what your best advice is for people who are like, I don't know if I can get in front of the camera. So, I mean, we've all been there, right? Where the first time I ever created a video online, I, I have a YouTube channel, which you can find and you'll probably make fun of my hair. But the first <laughs> video that I ever made on YouTube, I mean, my energy was low. I wasn't very exciting to watch. And I learned from watching myself. And I thought that's the advice that I tell people is to pull out your smartphone, record some videos, even if it's in your car because that's where you have the most privacy. And just because you record a video on your phone doesn't mean you have to show it to anyone. I mean, you can delete it when you're done, but practice recording videos of yourself, see what you look like and see how you sound, see how your gestures are, just get a sense of that. And then once you get to a point where you're more comfortable with recording videos and you think, you know, maybe this is good enough to share with the world or share with share with your spouse or share it with a friend and say, hey, what do you think of this video I just recorded? Give me your honest feedback. The more times you do it, the better you're going to get. I mean, that's just mm. how anything works in life, right? And so the other advice I would give people is to to really have a lot of energy on camera because the way that you speak to a human being when you're sitting in a room together is different than where than when you're on camera. I mean, you just... Really, the, the easiest way to do it is just to speak really loud. I mean, my wife gives me a hard time because when I record my, record my course content... She'll be outside, like maybe walking by my door and she's like, oh my gosh, like I could hear you all the way downstairs. You're so loud. It sounds ridiculous. But then when I get the course out there, I've never, ever, ever once heard someone say to me, 
you had way too much energy on camera. You sound ridiculous. Like it's just, yeah. it's natural. It feels good. Like if you've ever been in the, in the room when Russell is recording a video or an ad, if you've been in the office with him when he's doing that, it does sound weird. But to the other person on the receiving end, it sounds totally awesome. Like, hey, this guy's got a lot of passion. He's excited. I want to hear more about what he has to offer. And so, yeah, just talk loud, record lots of videos on your phone until you're comfortable. And the more times you do it, the better you'll get. I think that's great advice. In fact, I don't know anybody who would want to go through several days of course content, watching videos from someone who is speaking monotone and is not excited about what they're teaching. It's just the last thing you want. You want someone who is obviously excited about what they're doing. So I think that's great. Exactly. And one of the things that helps me too is to... um, like I'll even put a post-it note on maybe it's my camera or my laptop where I have my slides and I'll just, you know, say something like, you know, uh, make sure to smile. Cause I forget to smile when I'm doing course content or when I'm doing ads. So remind you got the resting grumpy face. Yeah. It's like a little happy face. I'll just write it on there. So it's a constant <laughs> reminder. And then also I will bold or cap capitalize the words that I want to emphasize because yeah. if you ever listen to a song, and if you hear the same beat for three minutes, you get bored and you check out, right? So that's why songs have highs and lows. Movie trailers have highs and lows. There's moments of emotion. There's moments of excitement. It's to keep the audience engaged. And they also don't know what to expect next. And so that's the same with your voice. So your voice is your instrument. So you really have to kind of, you have to emphasize certain words, say words louder, and then you get quieter depending on what you're talking about. So definitely you have to have variations in your voice. Mm. Otherwise people check out and they don't want to hear what you have to say. So that's another way to kind of keep that excitement going, bolding certain words and uh, and really speaking louder at different parts in what you're trying to deliver. Yeah, that's great advice. Russell teaches that. He teaches that a lot with, you know, I used to do a lot of speaking for Russell, you know, go around to different spots and speak. And when we train different speakers, whether it's on stage or whether you're on camera to actually go to an uncomfortable place of excitement, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's going to come across normal to them. He always teaches that. Um, And if you watch also to another thing you said, watching yourself, if you pay attention to the best athletes, they go back and they watch film as weird as that is. If you're talking into a camera you know, to go back and watch yourself, but you're going to find out, Oh my gosh, you're going to be your own worst critic but it's also going to help you a ton. You know, then you'll feel confident in showing to somebody, if you like it, chances are a lot of other people are going to like it too because you're your own worst enemy. Yeah. Like for instance, I blink way too much when I'm interviewing people. And I every time I watch it back, I'm like, Laura, stop blinking, stop blinking. But See? you know what? Can't help it. If the haters want to say something, they can. I'm a blinker. <laughs> now everybody's going to notice. I never noticed that. But see, we are. We're totally our own worst enemy. Now you've worked, like I said at the beginning, we had a total Rolodex of these people that you've worked with. Do you have like, in your mind, was there a Super Bowl like project for you? Was there something that was like your favorite project that you've worked on uh, that you'd like to tell us about? I would say just because of the notoriety of this guy, we were able to work on some ads for Mike Tyson. He came out with 12 rounds with Mike Tyson, which he yeah. also used click funnels to uh, to use. Rudy, Rudy Moore was involved. Mark Lack was involved. Yeah, yep. I remember that. Yep. And so we came into that project early um, and we we weren't given a lot of assets for the project, which I guess it kind of also helps to make it one of my favorites because it's not like they were recording, you know, 15 different scripts for video ads. They literally, they had nothing to work with for video ads. And so they gave us the VSL, which was the video sales letter, which was this five or 10 minute long raw clip of Mike Tyson talking on camera. It was supposed to go on the landing page to get people to buy the product. And that's all we were given to work with. So we had to go in to the VSL and pull out specific nuggets inside of the VSL and turn that into video ads. And so it took a little bit of work because, you know, like I said, the the, the videos weren't recorded specifically, specifically, specifically for video ads. And so it was a challenge. And so we took that and we're able to turn it into 78 different video ads assets. And so wow. they, they ran that with uh, with a bunch of traffic. But it was just a really cool project to work on because when I was seven years old, I had a cat and I named him Tyson because um, 
he, I don't know. He always just liked to play and he would like always punch at me and stuff. And so I was like, this cat's name is Tyson for sure. So, and I've, I've been a fan of Mike Tyson my entire life. I had Mike Tyson's punch out on Nintendo when I was a kid. Yeah. And yeah. so then to get to work on his campaigns, um, later on in life, it was just really cool for me. And so that's probably one of my, my favorite projects that I've had to work on. So that's we, cool we got story. a hold of a, we got a hold of a picture uh, and send it over to Russell. I have it somewhere. I'll have to box it to you of Mike in uh, a, a funnel hacker shirt. No which way. Which is super cool. Like Mike Tyson is a funnel hacker. I thought that was so cool. Well, you mentioned, cool. you mentioned, you know, that you didn't have a lot of this stuff for video ads. Do you walk into a situation a lot of times where it isn't scripted? I mean, some people can pull this off. Some people can't. Are there certain elements is it script? Is it background? Is it story? Like what are the elements that make good video ad creative? Is there a list? Like, how do you do that? So this is some of the stuff that I'm going to get into at Funnel Hacking Live, but there's 10 yes. ingredients that we look at when we are creating video ads for our clients. And there's 10 ad types that we look at. And the, the best way that I could explain it is it's kind of like when you order a sandwich on a menu, there's different sandwiches. And each sandwich has different ingredients inside of it, right? And so the ingredients that we have inside the video ads, you don't always put all 10 ingredients inside of every video ad that you do. So that's why we have the different ad types, right? So like, for example, you might have an ad that has a lot of pain points in it. It's got pain points. It's got social proof, which is testimonials. It's got, um, you know, results talking about what this product or service can do for people. And then you plug that into the different ad types. So I'm not going to get into all 10 ingredients unless you guys want me to. I can kind of touch on all 10 of them. I think just tease us because I know you're going to cover it at Funnel Hacking Live. Yeah, and I mean, I, I do have a free download for you guys too who are listening. So I don't know if you guys Ooh. want me to mention it now or we can talk about it later. But Yeah, tell created, us what that URL is and then we can talk about it later too. Yeah, I created a specific page for the listeners of this. It's at kevinanson.com slash CFR. Stands for ClickFunnels Radio. So get that, you're going to download a PDF and it's going to show you all 10 of the ingredients. But the oh, um, awesome. these are 10 ingredients that I've discovered after making thousands of ads. Like I would, we would make an ad for ClickFunnels or someone else and I would keep the notes app open on my phone and I would just start making notes of the different ingredients that we put in ads that were working. I'm like, okay, we made this ad. Like it started out with a pattern interrupt. Like that's, that's gotta be something that's really important. We should really start out all of our ads with pattern interrupts or, you know, we should identify the people, like make sure that we what's say, a good What's a good example of a pattern interrupt? A pattern interrupt could be something where, you know, I have a wallet that catches on fire. And so I flick the little flint on the wallet and it catches on fire, or you could be waving at the camera or, you know, you could show gotcha. like, you could have a fidget spinner you know, whatever it is, just yeah, like Russell. really into like the weird, goofy things within those first couple of seconds or like yep. slime or, you know, the things that kids are into and just some weird stuff. But then yeah, you Russell, realize, Russell like, had a guy doing if, pancakes once. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. if it's irrelevant to your content, it's like, oh, well, it did its job. It got your attention. Now you're watching. Now you're listening. Yeah. Now you're reading subtitles. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting to see, too, because I'll watch ads online all the time because I geek over this stuff and I'll see an ad on Facebook and it's got like 20 million views. But I always notice it has like this weird pattern interrupt in the beginning where it's literally like somebody taking a hot knife and like cutting a piece of soap. And it's like, what? Like, what is that? That has nothing to do with anything, but it's one <laughs> so of those satisfying. You know, yeah, it's a satisfying video. And like, it's the first two seconds and then people watch the rest of the video. It's the weirdest thing. So that's the pattern interrupt. And that's a, um, a neuro linguistic programming, uh, an NLP term where it's something that breaks people out of their normal everyday patterns. Because when you're scrolling through Facebook, if you just see, see a bunch of people, you know, where you see talking heads, people talking on camera, it gets a little bit mundane and boring. But when you see somebody cutting through a bar of soap or they have something on fire, it makes you stop. And so it, stop, it breaks up your pattern. It interrupts your pattern. So those things are really powerful. And that's one of my favorite ingredients on the ingredient list. And it's we very fascinating. Sure I feel have. like we could talk about that all day. <laughs> we could, yeah. I know, it's it's so powerful. And so, but to, like I said, to keep it simple, I mean, you could wear a funny pair of glasses, you could put on a wig, you could wave at the camera, you could spin around in a circle, whatever it is. But starting out your video that way is really, really important to get people's attention. Um, and so there's 10 ingredients that we're always looking at. 
So consider that, you know, the meat, the cheese, the lettuce, all the stuff. And then we have our ad types. So those are different combinations of ingredients. Like I talk about sandwiches. And so there might be an ad type where it's just all about social proof, right? So you have, you start out with a pattern interrupt, you talk about results, you talk about social proof, and then you have your CTA. And so that one is called the, um, the social proof ad, right? So that's an ad type. And so we have 10 ad types in total that we're always looking at. And these are proven ad types that we've discovered over the years after geeking out over this stuff. And so those, I mean, we just stick to what works. We stick to the ad types, we stick to the ingredients. And once you do that and you know, you, you get good on good on camera and you stick to the ingredients, stick to the ad types, you're going to start to see some results. So it's really cool stuff. It's, it's just how humans are hardwired. It's like when you're watching videos online and you're thinking you're maybe you're in kind of purchase mode and you're seeing some ad about, you know, I don't know if it's like some, maybe it's like a cleanse, like a juice cleanse or something, right? Psychologically, like you want the ad to talk about certain things because it's going to check off boxes in your head, even though you don't know what's happening. Like, does this thing work for other people? You know, is it getting results? Do other people talk about it? What pains is it going to solve? Is it safe? Um, you know, can I get it fast? Is it an affordable cost? Whatever it is, like all the objections and things that people have in their mind, as long as you address those things in the ad, which is what these ingredients and these ad types are designed to do, you are unconsciously, you're just driving that person to the sale because you're like, I said, you're checking off all those boxes. Yeah. Well, it sounds like your experience, you know, speaks volumes and, you know, these are tried and true methods. And I imagine anybody is, uh, Going to gain a lot of value out of these 10 ingredients. So can you just tell us that that URL one more time so our viewers and listeners can go grab that? Of course. Yeah. So go to kevinanson.com slash CFR. And if for whatever reason the, vote, the web domain doesn't work, I've had some issues with GoDaddy recently. I don't know what it is, but you might have to type in the www dot. But okay. kevinanson.com slash CFR. Awesome. I'm going to grab those 10 ingredients myself. Yeah. Well... <laughs> You know what I've noticed too, and and I never noticed right before getting into funnels, and I see it more and more. And I could probably say within the last two days, I have purchased something through a funnel that started with a video ad creative, like scrolling through Instagram. One was like a toilet cleaner. One was like a special shampoo that I was like, oh, yeah, I'll look at this. And, And it was exact that. So talk maybe about, you mentioned call to action. You mentioned, you know, kind of the hook with the, um, with the pattern interrupt. But then where do they go from there? Like, how does that work? Is it usually just dropping into like, you know, uh, if it's a coaching product, like how are you using the funnels in the call to action? So are you talking about how we use the the funnel inside of the actual video ad? Like maybe we have... Yeah, so yeah. So what do you do? Where's basically you have the video come in, right? People are engaged. And then where do they go from there? There's some type of call to action. What do they do? So typically the video ad is driving somebody to a landing page. And so one of the things that we've discovered is that if you can have congruency between the video ad and the landing page, that is a huge, um, that's, it's, it's a huge win. I mean, people like to see that. So it's kind of like if you have a video ad and you know, you're sharing all these things that are red and then somebody gets the landing page and everything's green unconsciously, they don't, they don't feel that congruency. Like it just feels off. Like, did I go to the wrong spot? Did I go to the wrong spot? Um, and yeah. so it's really important to, when you can, to create congruency between, and sometimes it could just be the messaging, right? Like maybe it's the things that you are addressing in the video ad have to match the messaging on the landing page. So if you're talking about, you know, here's how to homeschool your kids and then they get to the landing page and it talks about, you know, how to develop a, a curriculum um, you know, for something else, it's, it doesn't use the word homeschool. And you talk about maybe it's curriculum or something. It it has to be the same. And so, or am I a, am I a victim of poor split testing? (laughs) Right. Yeah. So make, make sure there's congruency between your messaging or the colors or the branding, whatever it is. And then also another thing that we found too, is that if you're recording video ads and you're, you know, hopping on your smartphone, you're recording a video ad, showing the landing page is could it, it could actually help your conversions quite a bit too. So what oh, you can in, do is actually in the video. Can, yeah, in the video, you could pull out your laptop oh, smart. and just flip your camera around and say, So you're gonna go to this page right here. All you need to do is enter your name and email 
And then on the next page, we're going to give you our free download. So make sure to check it out. So you're automatically showing people where they're going to be going. That's smart. So that way, when they get to the landing page, they're like, oh, I'm in the right place. All right, cool. I, I need to get this thing. All I have to do is enter my name and my email and I get what I want. That's great. So you also just showed them how, how to do it, which kind of gets in another one of my ad types, which is the demonstrator ad, which is you're demonstrating how the process works. And mm -hmm. like in ClickFunnels case, like we've done a lot of ads for them where it's demonstrating some of the benefits um, and features of the software and how it works. Because when people, it's kind of like buying a new pair of shoes and you don't ever get to see the pair of shoes. Like why would you ever buy a pair of shoes online, but you don't get to see what they look like first? I know it's an extreme example, but a lot of software companies, they don't demonstrate the software and how it works and what it looks oh, yeah. like before people actually get to it. And then, you know, it makes them want to buy it. So anyways, going off a little bit of a tangent there, but um, showing people the landing page is is important too. Yeah, very cool. Um, I can see how that, that makes sense. You know, having a demo of something, you don't want to sign up for something if maybe if you do know what the results are, but you, it, like if you don't understand what the features are and if it's going to serve you and your business, why are you going to sign up for it? So being able to see the, the insides of it and kind of like, you know, remove the curtain there, I'm sure is mm -hmm. e extremely valuable. Yeah. And I mean, another uh, example is people sell a lot of online courses, right? So, but they never show what the course looks like. Like, mm -hmm. is it going to be high quality? Like, what's it going to cover? Like, maybe how many modules? Yeah. How many modules? How long is it going to take me? What does the back end look like? And so that's one of the things that I did personally for my course when I was running lots of traffic to it um, last year and the year before was I would show people inside the course and show them what they get. So yeah. it creates that familiarity so as smart. well. You're demonstrating the product. Well, okay. So then what are they going to see from you at Funnel Hacking Live? So Beyond these Hacking, 10 ingredients. At Funnel Hacking Live, it's still being developed as far as what I'm going to what I'm going to cover, but it's going to be tapping into some of the ingredients, some of the ad types, some of the stuff that we've talked about here today, um, how to be an attractive character inside of your video ads and just using like, you know, really just using your smartphone because just keeping it as simple as possible for people without having to become some crazy advanced professional editor, but how you can use your smartphone up. to create video ads. I mean, if you look at guys like Dean Graciosi or Frank Kern, or even sometimes Russell, they will pull out their smartphone and record ads on their yeah. phone and then yep. they will send it yep. to their ad buyers on their ads team and they'll run the ads without, this is without captions, without titles or without anything on there. And the thing about them though, is they are really good marketers and they know what to say inside of their video ads, which is why they do really well. And it's not like, you know, hundred percent of the time when they create a video ad on their phone, it's going to crush, but they know really well, like they know how to speak copy. And yeah. Russell knows how to speak copy and he knows what people yep. want to hear inside of their video ads. And it's usually a lot of these ingredients um, that I'm sharing with you guys. And so just knowing those things and knowing what to say inside of your video ads versus just going out there and winging it, uh, it's going to get you a lot further ahead a lot faster. Awesome. I can't I wait that. to hear about it. It's going to be really fun and exciting for our our entire audience and anyone listening to this. I think they're going to gain a ton of value from it. Um, I think it's really cool. And one thing that I did want to bring up is I went to your site and you have a ton of content. You've got courses and you've got a challenge and um, some higher ticket things for going in depth with like YouTube ads and stuff, which I think is fantastic. But I personally signed up for your five day challenge because it's free. And I know that I have a lot to learn about ads. So can you just tell us a little bit about that in case people want to go check it out? Yeah, definitely. So there's a, a, cor a course in there where it's five days takes you through some of the different stuff that some of the stuff we talked about here today, but it goes more in depth, like the pattern interrupt and, you know, the different ingredients that you need to be putting inside of your videos and some other resources and tools and things that we use to create videos mm -hmm. for some of our clients. And so it's free. I mean, you can't, <laughs> you yeah. can't beat it. And the, I don't know if you guys want the link for that. Um, or you guys can put it in the show notes, but there's a link for, for the challenge. We'll be sure to include that in the uh, in the summary. Yeah, so it's it's definitely something that you're going to want to check out, um, and you'll learn a lot. You learn a lot about just just like the psychology behind what's going into video ads and just video yeah. online in general. I mean, even if you watch organic content on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, 
a lot of the people who have a really deep understanding of what people want to hear and see in their videos, they're using um, some of the same ingredients that I talk about. And so it's not like, you know, it's not like I invented this stuff, right? It's human psychology since the beginning of time, but I just applied it to video ads. So I know what needs to go into video ads and what doesn't. But, um, you know, it's it's been really fun to understand this stuff and, you know, taking the teachings from people like Dan Kennedy and Russell Brunson and just kind of mashing it all together into specifically video ads. These ingredients are dialed in for video ads. Yeah. Um, but there's, of course, more ingredients that you could be putting in other videos on organic stuff, but these are the ones that we focus on and it works for us. So, yeah. And you one, make it so one approachable. Last, <laughs> one, one last question too, as we wrap up, I mean, we could talk to you forever, but I'm curious, like we talk about a lot of these things that are good to put in videos. Is there anything where you'd be like, in any circumstance, do not ever, ever do this? Um, that is a great That's question. I think <laughs> my mind immediately goes to compliance because I'm always like, oh, you can't say this type of stuff. I Ooh, mean, that's a great point. It's it's obvious, but it's like, you know, you can't say, you can't make any guarantees that people are going to make money, which is just something that you just yeah. don't do. You know, I guarantee you this is going to get, you know, make you so much money or it's going to change your life or you're going to be able to quit your job, things like that. So we're always careful about how we word things like that. But as far as video ads, I think that if you're not, if you're making a video where you're speaking on camera and you have your camera on a tripod and it's sitting there and you're just not very engaging and not exciting to watch, it's probably not going to benefit you very much in the long run. Uh, so I would definitely focus on being amazing on camera. It's, it's, it's something that's going to set you apart from other people. And then if you're not great on camera and you're still learning how to do it, instead of having your camera on a tripod, just kind of walk around the room, walk around outside just so that, ha the, the, you know, the shot has movement versus mm -hmm. just sitting there in a boring office. So do that. But a, that's, that's all I can think of. I'll, I'll, ads. I'll try to think of more for you, but sorry. What's that? I, I, that was kind of a trick question. One of, one of our best performing ads that you mentioned that is literally John Parks going outside of the office. You know, he does all the media buying. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, Hey, I'm the media buyer for Russell. And he's just walking. And it's a nice, you know, have you seen this one? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, like we, this one is performing really, really well. Challenge secrets, masterclass.com. We made the ad. So yeah, I love that one. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he well, did a really good job. Once again, once again, it's kevinanson.com slash CFR. And if you haven't, I think it's this out. We've got about a week and a half left until fun hacking live. Make sure that you are there in Orlando uh, on September 27th through 30, funhackinglive.com, and you'll see amazing people just like Kevin. Kevin, thanks so much. We'll have to have you on again. So many fun stories about uh, different ads and things that people can do. So we really appreciate you, and we will see you at Funnel Hacking Live. Thanks, thanks so much, guys. Kevin. Appreciate it. Have Thank a good you. one. Bye-bye.